I can't wait to see your face when I tell you this. There are companies that have done baptisms at their at their company events. No. They're using spiritual faith-based manipulation to keep people in those types of extortions. That person continues to get paid off, off of it. Hey, my name is Shalise Ansola, and this is Cults to Consciousness, where we discuss leaving high-demand religions or organizations and find healing and independence through awareness and true individual sovereignty. As always, if you would prefer to see our faces instead of just listening, head over to my YouTube channel at Cults to Consciousness. It would mean a lot if you could like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notified when I have new videos coming. And thank you for being here. So... Today's guest, it's a little bit different than what we've been doing before on Cults to Consciousness. Rather than focusing on the religious cults, we are going to the organization side of things, which is going to be really fun. So today's guest, she is a wife, she's a mom, a military veteran. She spent 13 and a half years in different multi-level marketing companies. She healed her way out, and now she's using her social media platforms to spread education, raise awareness about the dangers of MLMs. She also has an awesome podcast herself, The Beast Mode Podcast, highly recommend, where she's actually telling stories of people who have left these culty things, just like this podcast. So I'm really excited to have her on today. Welcome, Erin Bees. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here and hopefully help prevent some people from joining multi-level marketing companies. Yeah, this is so exciting. I um, I have some confessions. I have actually been in a few myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will say, I will say it didn't go well. I was not a top seller. I was not even like the most basic seller. I would basically get roped into joining these and I because here's the thing I think they're they're pretty charismatic in their sales pitches as we're gonna go over and when they show you like this this golden rainbow at the end of everything where you're like oh I can do that I can make this much money it just it sounds too good to be true and the problem is it actually is too good to be true absolutely <laughs> yeah. yeah also I come from a background that's pretty culty. And I think, unfortunately, when we grow up that way, we tend to be wired to fall into other ones fairly easily. Uh, or maybe that's just me giving myself some credit. I think you're dead on with that, actually. I think, just in my opinion, obviously, I'm not an expert with what I'm about to say, but I, I really do feel like if you have been in a any type of an abusive relationship, you are or can be, I guess that's the best way to say that, you can be more prone to those types of relationships unless you, you know, heal, set the boundaries uh, for yourself. And I feel like MLM companies are the same way. They know exactly what they're doing. You know, you're seeing the lifestyle posts, you're seeing the, uh, the income claims, the health claims, and it's really kind of this perfectly manipulative concoction that draws people in that are looking for something. Yeah, I agree. And also, I think as far as the positive side of it, usually the people that get involved in MLMs are people that really want to make a difference. They really want to help people. They really want to help themselves and they have the best of intentions and they just get taken advantage of in these huge corporations. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then you... uh you tend to lose yourself because you're trying to do more and more. You know, you're being coached to do more and more and to give up specific things, whether that's, you know, time or rest and you lose yourself. We we watch people's language change on social media. They start speaking differently. They start talking like the person that brought them into the MLM. You know, there's less and less of really them being themselves on social media and more about the business, more about the product. And it's kind of like they forget who they were and they replace it with what they think is going to make them successful. But in any kind of a sales job, if everybody is doing the same thing, if everybody is marketing the same way, that nobody is going to stand out and be different. And the marketing part of sales is standing out and being different. So people go, oh my God, this is who I want to work with. 
But in an MLM, you're taught to duplicate. That's a big, big term in, in multi-level marketing. Duplicate, duplicate. Just do what I do. Just do what I do over and over again. And in my opinion, it's the complete opposite of how you should market your business. Right. Yeah, that makes total sense. Prepaid legal? Yep. <laughs> so you know that one. I do. Pay monthly to have a lawyer, have your back, whatever. I think I was in college and they were like, all you have to do is plus press play. If you can press play on a video, you can be a sales associate. Yep. And I'm like, well, I'll try it out. I had like one party of like three or four people from college come over and they're like, yeah, we're good. And I was like, but I thought I just had to press play. <laughs> But this is supposed to be so amazing. Yeah. I will say there is one thing that has stuck with me that I think is good advice. Um, I went to one of those huge seminars. I was roped into going and that's ultimately why I signed up. So they work. Um, This huge seminar and this guy, he was like, I see all you guys out there not taking notes. But let me remind you that I would rather trust a short pencil than a long memory. (laughs) Oh, man. And I don't know why that stuck with me, but I was like, that's a good point. And I started writing stuff down. Anyway, I was roped into that one. The next one was Zingular. Have yep. you heard of that one? Yes, I Weight have. Weight loss. Which, to all of their credit, their products actually did work for me. I don't know if it was healthy. It probably wasn't. And I think they had to change their formula later because I started taking it a couple years later and it did nothing. So it was probably – there were probably some illegal things in there. Um, the other one was Melaleuca. Yep the home cleaning supplies and you're doing good for the planet and like natural stuff and I was like this is cool honestly I never really tried to sell it I was just like yeah I'll sign up for the whole what was a distributor program so I can get the discounts and then I'm just like a single person living alone I don't need bundles of supplies every month so I just ended up canceling. I'm like, this is crazy. So all of that to say, my family has heard all of the calls from me. Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys, you got to check this out. It's a great deal. Um, and it's interesting because I never realized how culty it was until I found your page. I don't know if someone recommended you to me, but I started watching your content on Instagram and I was like, yeah, this is really culty. And I started like paralleling the ways that it's like religious cults like you just said you lose your individuality and your identity you just become one with the machine and that so really thanks to you opened my eyes to all of this stuff and I'm like wow I think this would be a great topic because I think probably like me many other people don't necessarily see the wrong and the harm in it so that's why we're here We are here to talk about how pyramid schemes use mind control for sales. Yeah. Thank you. That's what an incredible compliment. I'm glad you found my page. I'm glad you found it helpful. You know, that's the reason that I make the content that I do. And there's a certain part of my healing journey. And and I I really do think that that's the reason that I started speaking out against anti M or speaking out and doing anti-MLM content is because I participated for in it for so long that I had an inside look at, at a lot of the things that are going on. And it was my way of making things right for hurting people. Even if it was not my intention to hurt people, uh, obviously, like nobody intends to normal people, I guess I should say, don't intend to hurt other people. But when you're participating in the kind of business model that multi-level marketing companies are, you're hurting people because in order for you to get ahead, you you really have to kind of do it off of other people's shoulders based off of their effort and their sales. You know, And that's why when you look at some of these companies' compensation plans, you'll see that, well, you make a little tiny bit of commission off of the sale of the product, and you make a lot higher of a commission or a bonus, they like to say bonus instead of commission, um, off of recruiting other people. Whether that's a bonus for signing them up or you're getting paid off of their sales for the month, there's a huge difference in the two. And if you see, if you know, if you in your mind you're joint, you're you're wanting to join something to make extra money, you can see where the money is. Well, the money is in recruiting. It's not in actually selling the product. It's not about the product. Typically, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I have heard that from leaders in the six companies that I was a part of. It's not really about the product. It's about recruiting. 
and you're recruiting people that are doing the exact same thing that you're doing because you want to duplicate. It's wild. And from what you said, there's so much that we could unpack. You know, like you talked about in-person events. You talked about going to what I call indoctrination events, those in-person training events for the companies. You know, there was a reason that that person was saying what he or she did from the stage, you know, the short pencil memory thing. And it's because, in my opinion, I don't even have to see it to know. <laughs> the reason that he was say he or she, was it he or she? It was a guy, yeah. Okay, the reason he was saying that, in my opinion, is because he was wanting to make sure that he was keeping everybody engaged and it was to uh, fluff his own ego, if you will. Okay, I got him. They're excited. They're going to go out and work because there was probably a lot of his downline in that audience. You know, hey, you guys aren't paying attention. You're not writing notes. Is what I'm saying not important enough? How could you not be writing this down? That's probably the flavor of of what he was saying. And then the in-person events, you know, there's um, prior to the pandemic, those were really, really big. I mean, I used to do them too. And it's people are going to want to check out whatever the product is. And if they're right there, in my opinion, it's easier to push those high pressure sales. You have the product right there. They're, you know, I'm already here. I already came here on a Saturday afternoon or a Tuesday night or whatever. I might as well just try it. But there's deception in the fact that many of those people, I just saw this the other day. In one of my videos, there was a doTERRA rep. She was talking about a new product that they're, you know, that they just recently released. And so I was clicking and I was going through all of her, her content and they switched their content depending on what's the product of, of the month or the newest thing or whatever. And when I clicked on the link, because she was talking about the product, it looked like you were signing up as a distributor. So here she's talking about the product. You go to the link that she mentions in the reel on Instagram. And then you, most people don't even realize they're signing up as a distributor. They're just trying to get the product. Wow. Yeah. Sneaky. It's very sneaky. It's very deceptive. And that's what we see with these companies, with these MLMers. I love when you break down um, these social media posts and you're you're going through this video. I was watching one. I don't even remember what she was trying to sell. But she was like pitching to her team like, this is how you recruit more people. And she's talking a million miles a minute. And you just are like, just want to like take a breath for this woman. And yep. showing all of the different ways that she was manipulating or using manipulative tactics to not only manipulate her team, but tell her team how to manipulate other people into yeah. signing up. So let's kind of, let's dive into that. Yeah. Uh, I actually remember that video. She was in Plexus. I don't think she took a breath the whole time. And for those of you that have watched it, you know, uh, you know what I'm talking about. There were, there were many people and this is not anything against her. This is what she's been indoctrinated to be a part of. You know, when you're in that kind of mindset, you are, it is chaotic. It is, uh, there is no time for a pause. So us having a conversation like this, there's natural pauses, you know, it's okay to, to kind of take a breath and think about what you're saying. But when you're in an MLM, it is so chaotic that that's how that comes out. When they go live, they're talking a mile a minute and some of them are super loud. And the thing that was really alarming to me about that video is she was identifying the person, the victim, if you will, just in my opinion, of who she wanted to rope into her commercial cult. She was saying it mm -hmm. loud and proud and telling her team, I want somebody, you know, that has a relationship with God that questions themselves. And she literally went through this list of people and the traits that she wanted to take advantage of. And it was really sick. Right. I think one of the things that stood out to me and that I want you to continue is, is when she said, yeah, these are people who are very frugal and they're going to say, I don't have enough money for this. And this is how you get them to buy. And I'm like, you're you're going after people that don't have the money already? What yeah. are you thinking? Yeah. 
you know, in a lot, a lot of these MLM leaders that have been in for some time, when they have somebody that says, you know, I really can't justify spending this. I, I saw a post the or a, a story the other day from a top leader and prove it. And she was like, the fact that you don't have the money is the reason why you need to do this and start a business right now. Oh, I, I know that's, that's, that's how they go about doing this. That's that's what they say. That's what they do. And they're like, you don't have the money for it? <laughs> you needed this more than I realized you did. That's what oh they say. Oh, my gosh. This yeah. is actually – it's crazy because it's religious thinking because I've heard that exact same thing from a religious context. Um, in Mormonism, they, they were caught – saying to people in very, very, very poor places in Africa, the reason you don't have money is because you don't pay tithing to God. What? And they're literally telling these people, when it comes down to you deciding if you're going to feed your family or pay tithing, you always pay tithing. Oh, my God. Yeah. To hear you say that, that they're using those same type of manipulation tactics is just... I mean, I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. There is a, a very distinctive cross between religious cults and multi-level marketing companies. And, and when I say that, I'm not saying that there's, you know, that everybody in multi-level marketing companies are deceptive and manipulative. No, there's very, very good people that get roped into MLM and they're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make money on my terms and financial freedom and all of that. And they are trying to replicate the success. Not everybody in multi-level marketing companies are bad people. Of course. But like anything else, there's gonna, yeah, there's gonna be bad apples. There's gonna be people that have figured it out and know what they're doing. You know, they've been a part of multiple companies. They are looking for that ground floor opportunity. There's a new company that starts up. All of a sudden, they are joining this new company. They're bringing their team from previous companies. They're moving up the ranks faster. And that's how you really, what they call scaling the business. You're taking you know, these teams, these people that signed up in previous companies, you're bringing them with you, which is called cross-recruiting. And that's why we see so many lawsuits within multi-level marketing is because people do exactly that. Yeah, it's um, it's crazy. And like you said, the people are amazing they, and they're just doing their best. Like everyone's just doing their best. Everyone's trying to make some extra money. These are expensive times. I get it. Like I want a side hustle. <laughs> yeah. And the problem isn't people that are wanting to hustle. It's that they're putting the focus into something that is ultimately going to put them in the hole even further. And and maybe you could speak that, to that too with your own experience because I think it should be noted that you were a top seller. Like you were in the top, top person. So like you understand what it takes to get to those high levels. Um, but also when you when you started taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture and doing the research and looking at the numbers, realizing that that's not everybody, not everyone has those talents to be able to recruit and get people in their downline. So maybe you could speak to what it's like for the average person who is just buying all this product and they're stuck with it and now they're worse than they started. Yeah. And there's a couple ways that we can do this. Um, I always talk about income disclosure statements from the multi-level marketing companies themselves. You know, I always mention doing a profit and loss statement. So if if by chance you have people that are listening to this that are in a current MLM or currently in an MLM or they have been, you know, do a profit and loss statement because there's there's a lot of sneakiness, there's a lot of deception in the numbers when it comes to these companies. And so one Look for the income disclosure statement from that company if they have one. It's not required by law, so there's a lot of these companies that don't have it. And if they don't have an income disclosure statement, consider that a giant red flag because, in my opinion, they're hiding what the reps are not making. They're hiding those numbers for a very good reason, and it's probably because they're making the majority of their money off of the distributors ordering the products, and they don't want that to be shown. Mm. So... If you, if you look at these income disclosure statements, um, a lot of the companies, you're going to see a very distinct pyramid. The, the, you know, you're going to see 80 to 90% roughly, that's just an estimate, that are 
um, barely making anything. And according to the FTC, 99.7% of people that join a multi-level marketing company either lose money or don't make any at all. That's a huge number. So just keep that in mind huge number. We're not talking about somebody that's going to start this business, you know, and they're going to make a little bit of money. No, when you look at the big picture, when you look at the actual numbers and you're comparing it to the income disclosure statements and all of that, the numbers do not add up to somebody being profitable doing, you know, selling the product. On one of your podcast episodes, your guest was speaking to how she was doing her best. She was trying to sell and she was working towards this cruise. And she was so close to meeting meeting the deadline that she just wrote a check to cover the, the rest. And then at the end of the day, they said that she didn't even qualify for it. That is mm -hmm. so heartbreaking to me. Someone who just wanted to take their family on a vacation. I don't know her situation. Maybe she she couldn't afford it just on her own and she really wanted to make this happen for her family, spends her own money and then doesn't even get the reward for it. Yeah. There's a couple layers to this. Um, one that's called the sunk cost fallacy. You know, I'm already in it. I'm already committed to it. It's only this much. You know, if I do this, I'm going to get this. And there's a lot of multi-level marketing companies that use that kind of fallacy, that tactic, if you will, to bring people in. Um, you can also call it a pay to play type thing where, you know, you're spending this much money. It's a, con I've seen, I saw prove it just do this recently. And, you know, you, you buy this kit and then you're entered into it and there's a cash bonus. But when you look at how many people earned that bonus or that trip, it's a very small amount. And these companies work extra hard, in my opinion, to disqualify people from getting that trip they or the bonus or whatever because they're getting the money on the front end from people buying in on it and then they don't have to pay out that bonus but they still have that that income for the company it's really deceptive i think it's really manipulative but then also the mindset of somebody that is like oh my gosh i'm so close to this contest you know it's only it's only $500 it's only $1200 whatever that number is and if i if i have this product i'll be able to sell it and you know, then I'm going to get this and in point blank, the really crazy part about all of this is that if they would just take their family on the trip, it's going to be probably cheaper than it is paying for the product. And then, you know, the airfare and all of that stuff going on this trip that the company is like, you won this with the company because a lot of times if it's a trip, it's not all inclusive. So you have to pay to get there, you know, and, you know, like, let's say it's a cruise. You've got to go in the day before, which means you're going to have a hotel room cost plus the airfare plus the transfer to the ship. You know, you have all of these things that nobody talks about and you paid to get there. So it's kind of like if you really compare the cost of those two things, it would you'd be better off just taking your your family on the cruise and just paying for it. It would be it would end up being cheaper. Right. And cruises actually aren't that expensive. Yeah. I know that you won the car bonus. Did you ever get to the point where you were winning trips? Yeah. When you go on these trips, does it end up just being like more workshops to teach you how to sell more product? Or is it actually like you just go and there's nothing to do with the company? Yeah, I've been on several trips. Um, one was a cruise and I had to pay to get there. I had to pay for the hotel. I had to pay for the transfer to the the ship, um, plus all the all the you know excursions and all of that stuff on the ship or whatever. And then there were several trips that I went on when I was with my first company, and that was all paid for. I just had to make sure that everything was okay on the home front with the kids, um, and then just get on the plane and go. All of that was taken care of. That's the only company that I've experienced that with. That company is no longer. Um, it was it was acquired by Pure Romance, um, but the majority of the time you're going to meetings and there's business type things to do. So even though, you know, I won this vacation, I'm so excited, I'm going to Cancun or I'm going wherever, you still are going to be working while you're there. And when I say that, I mean, you might have meetings, you might have classes, 
but you're also staring at your phone the whole time because you still have to sell and you still have to recruit. So there's no, there's no pause. It's all a smoke screen. That's all it is. And it looks good on social media. It's a brilliant smoke screen because you're getting people to buy your product, sell it for them, pay their own money, and go on, go on a trip where they teach you how to buy more product and sell more product for the company. <laughs> Right. And then the company gets a tax write-off for all of it. Really? And then the the rep pays the taxes on it, typically. So when you're in a multi-level marketing company, you are a 1099 contracted employee. You're not a W-2 employee where taxes are taken out. You're a 1099 contracted employee with the company. That's so interesting because then you, so you're a 1099 independent contractor, so you don't get any benefits. Yeah. What? Okay. Maybe you can fill me in here. What are the benefits? <laughs> Do most people get a lot out of this if they're not one of the top sellers? Or is it just a struggle the whole way through hoping that you can become one of the top sellers and get something out of it? Great question. And in my opinion, it's a struggle the whole time unless you're a top seller. And the people at the top are are those that um, get in early when the company launches. They are people that have a large following that have, you know, built their their audience, built their followers over a, a period of time, and then all of a sudden somebody pitches them an MLM and they are now baiting and switching their audience. I've seen that happen a ton. Um, there's somebody that can come in with a bridge contract, meaning. The company that they're joining says, hey, Will, you know, here's a contract and you're going to get this much money. You have to hit this per month. You have to hit this rank by this time period. And there's all different ways that you can do it. But it locks in that person's income typically for them to come and build in a new company. When they build in a new company, they're bringing over people that have been following them from other companies, customers, team members, that kind of thing. Um and that's typically how that works, you know, and the main thing that a lot of these, these MLMers use to try and bring people in is the draw of community, which is very similar to religious cults. It's the community. Mm -hmm. It's the support. It's the love. You're going to be accepted. And let's not forget that this is being pitched as a business. If it's a business, let's run it like a business. I don't need you to tell me what I need to be doing or how many people I need to be messaging. If this is truly a business, then I'm going to be in charge of what I'm doing. But that's not what we see. And this is where an, an, another area where religious cults and commercial cults, which is, in my opinion, what multi-level marketing companies are, kind of cross over. And it's that draw for community. And I think that is the most dangerous because you get love bombed, you know, you get welcome posts when you join, you buy the big kit and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. You join the team chats, you get on the team training. They're saying all the right things. And the second that you question, very similar to re religious cults or, or any cults for that matter, all of a sudden you're gonna be exiled. Because now you're using too much critical thinking. Mm -hmm. I like how you are. I like how you're illustrating the fact that they really blur the lines between business and personal, mm -hmm. which is what religion does. I mean, religions are kind of businesses in ways, but at least the big successful ones. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> to that point, I I was listening to another one of your videos where you're talking about how they actually encourage people to get divorced from their spouses if their spouses aren't on board. Like, what business is going to meddle that way? Like, I'm not going to go into the restaurant if I'm working at a restaurant and my boss is like, your husband doesn't like you being a waitress. I think it's time you divorce him. No, yeah. that doesn't happen anywhere else. And why do they think it's okay for it to happen in this environment, especially when they're claiming that it's just a business? Like you you own your own business, which is a funny thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just, it blows my mind that they meddle so much. And like you said, there's so much positive 
coming from it and coming their way that they don't see it as an issue until it's so deeply personalized that they're like, oh, I let these people into my life too far and that was not their place. Yeah. It's probably hard to see that. Yeah. And then when you when you really start to question it, you think there's something wrong with you because in all of this kind of formula that we've been talking about, you know, if you start to critically think and ask yourself, you know, what am I doing and why am I spending this time doing this or that or with these people or, you know, you have been so indoctrinated by that point that now when you're questioning it, you're questioning yourself and who you are because up to this point you used to be this person that spoke this way and shared this on social media but you've lost yourself so much that you're like well but who am i you know and the longer you've been in these these commercial cults the longer it takes for you to remember who you were the longer it takes for you to go well, hang on a second. I used to really enjoy this, but I stopped doing it because I was wanting to be, you know, successful in this business that's being I'm being told this is a business, but I'm not really making any of the decisions on what products and the pricing or any other decisions that a normal business owner would make. And so it the unraveling of that is really intense and it's really scary and the fact that you are you know questioning yourself in all of it you're not questioning the business model because you're taught and indoctrinated to not question you know and to just trust you know your leaders and the company they have our best interest they're a business so wherever the retail wherever the income is going to come from that's where they're going to double down and what we see in a lot of these commercial cults is that income comes from the distributors, from them front loading, from the pay to play stuff, from all of that. And so it's really scary to unravel some of that. You know, I, I have this visual that it's a, a yarn ball and something happens, you notice something, something doesn't feel right. And there's a little piece of yarn that's sticking out of the yarn ball and you go, well, what, what happens? This is, yeah. this is cognitive dissonance, right? And so you pull that little piece of yarn and you're like, well, hang on a second. Maybe you found an anti MLM video or a podcast or you found stuff on TikTok like I did. You're like, wait, hold on. What they're saying is accurate. You start to pull a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And before you know it, you're questioning everything and you don't know who you are. And this, this time that you've spent, the money that you've sent or spent, it all comes crashing down and it's terrifying. And you have to just sit in it, and, you know, use critical thinking, ask yourself questions, journal, talk to a friend, talk to a family member that hopefully you haven't exiled because they didn't agree with what you were doing and they were vocal about it. And then you have to heal and repair those relationships. And the whole process is terrifying because they were com your community, right? Yeah, I really like that visual of just a ball of yarn. And now you're just sitting on this tangled mess of string <laughs> going, yeah. this is my life. You just pull it up and it's just tangled and what do you do with it? And now how do you unravel the tangles and the mess that you've created for yourself? And how do I unravel my relationships that I was forcing, I was forcing these products onto people that I love and I was trying to get them to sell? Like, how do I get them to trust me again as a human and not think that I'm just trying to get close to them because I want to sell them something? Yeah. It must be really difficult. I, I've i been um, approached multiple times because I do have a social media following on my personal page. And I didn't realize, I don't, they almost got me. I, I'm not going to lie. There was mm -hmm. like, maybe it was Arbonne, I don't remember. But the reason is because they really try to connect with me on a personal level. And I didn't know that they were taught to do this until like three other women did the exact same thing. And I was like, oh! <gasps> Yeah, they didn't actually care. You know, it kind of hurts when when you realize that they just don't have they don't want anything to do with you. They just want your business. And they just see me as like the perfect person to put in their downline because I'm going to sell it on social media and make them lots of money. Yes. Which is funny because if they were to actually look at my followers, most of them are dudes and most of them have don't care about beauty products. Right? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> but I think what um what got me was it was a voice note. So I check my requests all the time and I see this voice note from a cute young girl, 
I don't know, maybe like six years younger than me, just like bright eyed, bushy tail. Oh my God. You should let me guess what they said. Oh, okay. Let, let's hear it. <laughs> um, hey, girl. How's it going? I know that this is a, uh, that I know that this is a little bit, you know, out of left field. I don't normally do this. But I love your vibe on your page. I love what you are doing and how you go about doing it. And I don't know if you've ever thought about monetizing your Instagram or monetizing (laughs) your scroll. (laughs) But, you know, if, if you're interested, let me know. And if it's not for you, that's okay. I've got a short video that you can watch. But I just wanted to reach out. Let me know what you think. Oh my gosh, you nailed it. The only thing that they added for a little cushion, a little padding was just a little bit more about my page. Something that made me go, oh, they actually did look through my stuff and it wasn't completely spam. They do. Yeah. And so um, they looked through my page. They got to know me. And I don't know what I was posting about at the time, but it was something that I was really passionate about. And so they spoke to that. And so, of course, I'm not going to ignore them, like leave them on red because I'm like, that's a really sweet message. And so I responded back with a voice note. Thank you so much. That's really sweet. Um, Unfortunately, I just do not have the time to, you know, sell this product because I knew where it was going. Like, okay, you want me to sell a product? And then they're like, oh, my gosh, I 100 percent like no worries. It's okay. Um, But you are vegan. So I think you would really appreciate these products. And like, you don't have to sell them. Maybe you're just interested in buying them. Mm -hmm. And I looked through it and I was like, yeah, maybe. But then, you know, I forgot about it and was like, I don't want to spend money on something else. But that stuff works. Like it almost worked on me. I mean, are we surprised I joined like four MLMs before? But (laughs) there's there's so many people that join multiple companies. There are so many people that 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 ball of yarn shows up, which we'll call cognitive dissonance. I don't know why I see this this yarn ball being red, but I do. It's a red yarn I, ball. I saw that too. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. And I, I think that when people first start to see that piece of yarn sticking out, I think that they go, okay, well, this is not where I'm supposed to be. You know, this is not the company. This is not the opportunity. This isn't the leadership. I, I, I don't feel aligned with this company anymore. That this, I, I really do think that this is why we see a lot of people in MLM when they switch companies. They do some sort of a live where they're like, I just wasn't feeling aligned. It's different over here. And to me, that tells me a lot about where they're at in the whole process they think it's the company they think it's the leadership and they're not they're not ready to to see that it's actually the business model and Mm -hmm. that takes time and i think that that's a very vulnerable place for people to be you know when they're not happy in their current company and they're maybe seeing that they're not making a lot of money they're not recruiting you know um things just don't feel right and then they get a message like that in their inbox And then they go, oh, wow, well, maybe it is different. Let me just try this one more time. And then they join another company and they're like, okay, well, it's kind of cool. There's things that are familiar. Then they start to learn the language of that commercial cult, which is a little bit different than, than the previous company. The products are a little bit different. And then they jump to these companies until they finally realize, God, I'm spending all of this money. What have I gained from it? I've lost who I am. I don't even know how to post on social media anymore because everything is, you know, trying to filter people. Everything is about, you know, classifying people as either a potential customer, a customer, a potential recruit lead, recruit, you know, every you're constantly sorting people. They've lost a ton of money and then they're like, "Wait, but I've been I've been told that The reason that I'm not seeing success in my business is because of me. I'm not working hard enough. I'm not showing up. I'm not doing exactly what my leader told me to do, which there's that duplication piece. And when you're not doing those things, they have this victim blaming and shaming system in place so that, oh, it's not the company's fault. It's not the leadership's fault. You didn't do the work. You're the problem. So if you're upset that, you know, this didn't work for for you, that's on you. Because we're over here winning. It's absolutely insane. 
Yeah, there's another parallel to religious cult mentality. Exact same thing. You're never worthy enough. Oh, you're not getting answers from God? You must not be reading your scriptures enough. You must not be tithing enough. You must not be a valiant servant of the Lord. Or it's just how life is, you yeah. know? <laughs> like, you can't you can't blame everything on your own self-worth and or have your own self-worth be dependent on actions and reactions of others around you. And, okay, so we have the getting on a personal level with people. We have the victim blaming going on. What are some other things that these companies teach people either to convert into um, reps or to mm -hmm. sell people on the products? Yeah. Uh, to convert customers to reps, they a lot of these companies will have like a free product program where, you know, if you refer two people, just as an example, and they set up their auto ship as customers, and they have at least this much, or they spend at least this much, you know, your product is free. So there's people that are, you know, referring people so that they get their product for free, but they're still a distributor in the company. So this is a business. Um, so there's that part, the, the way that they really try to get customers is by health claims. Mm. I just recorded a video that's going to be coming out soon. And it's all about uh, this new company. And there's mention of anxiety. You know, I used to have anxiety. I used to be depressed. Um, I used to suffer from psoriasis, you know, and now I've, I'm taking this product that has absolutely nothing to do with any of those things. But I've noticed it's cleared it up. Of course, they're not going to say <laughs> yeah. that part. It has nothing to do with this. I'm saying that. Because when you look at the ingredients, when you look at the things that they have disclosed, if it's not hidden behind a proprietary blend like a lot of these companies do, you know, they bring in these customers off of these outlandish health claims. You know, I have this zen-like feeling now. Well, you can get that same zen-like feeling just spending 10 minutes meditating and just pausing in your day. You know, you don't, you don't have to buy a $130 product to have mental clarity or focus. There's other ways that you can go about doing that. And a lot of that's free, if not buying a product from you know your local health food store. So that's a lot of what I see with customers or trying to get customers is health claims. Any challenge with your health, you will see some of these companies using anxiety, depression, thyroid, autoimmune you know, disorders, uh, anything you can think of they're going to say it trying to gain customers. It's it's sick. Is that legal? No. No. How are these people how are they getting away with it? Well, what happens is and this is what I tell, you know, my audience as well, when you see this stuff, you need to report it to the FTC. You need to, you know, screen record it, you know, grab the link if it's on social media or whatever and send it directly to the FTC because the FTC is the one that can actually go after the companies, go after the distributor and say, you can't be doing this. There's been several people that I know of that the, I think it's the FTC has said, you're not allowed to join another multi-level marketing company. I think it's the FTC, but they still do. They'll do it under like a spouse's name or a kid's name, you know, and yeah. So when you see stuff like that, it's got to go to the FTC so that they can investigate it. Um, and it's it's frustrating because the lobbying with political agendas, there's, you know, a lot of these MLM companies will hire people that used to work for the FTC because they know the loopholes. Mm. And that's how, without getting into like the whole history of multi-level marketing companies and how it, they've come about and how they're protected by certain political parties and figures and it's a mess. So no, it's not supposed to happen. The companies will train their people don't say it. But then at their events, they're like, Oh, well, this helps with this. And this helps with that. And then their reps repeat it. And we report it. Yeah, there's companies that have been fined. And yeah, it's, it's wild. And I've heard you talk about the bite model before, which I talk about all the time. Yes. Obviously, we both talk about culty things. So maybe we could go through them quickly like in different ways that specifically multi-level marketing companies are using these control tactics. Yeah, we can do that. Where do you want to start? <laughs> start with the B, behavior control. Yeah, um, behavior control is how you're, how you're moving through this world, whether it's on social media or in person. 
I think a big thing with behavior control is you are filtering people to either be a customer or a team member in everything that you do, whether it's your posting, messaging, you're running to Target, uh, you're grabbing groceries, you're picking up your kids from school. Every interaction is going to be, you're going to be programmed that you are filtering people. You're, you're going to try and connect with them because they're either going to join your team or they're going to buy your product. Mm. Everything. So that it doesn't really leave any room for real relationships. It's all just surface level. I have an agenda. Yeah. I call those transactional relationships. Mm. Mm -hmm. They know a lot about the people that they come into contact with. But just because you know a lot about that person doesn't mean you really know them. There's not a relationship where you're sharing who you are and your interests and, you know, there's no deeper relationship. It's really, I know a bunch of facts about you. And the reason that I want to know about you is because I want to know how I can get you to be my customer or a team member. I want to know the pain points. I want to know exactly what I need to say in order to sell you this product and later have you join my team, if not join my team right off the bat. I think that's the worst part is that not only are these companies teaching people how to manipulate, but then once that person's manipulated, then they're forced to manipulate other people and they're forced to manipulate other people. And it's this ongoing thing and people don't realize that they're in this cycle of abuse. Yes. Where it's like, how do you break free from that? And how do you actually finally recognize that you're using these abuse tactics if you yourself have normalized being abused by your upline. Yeah. So if your upline is saying to you, you're not selling enough, don't you care about your family? Mm -hmm. Don't you care about their well-being? Don't you want them to be healthier and happier? Mm -hmm. And don't you want their don't you want to be around more for them? Then how easy is it to pass that on yeah. to your next person? It just keeps perpetuating. Yeah. And then there's a lot of people, because remember at the beginning of this, I said, you know, there's really great people in multi-level marketing. Not everybody is is wanting to be at the top. Not everybody is a manipulator. Not everybody is, of course. you know, there's, there's very, very good people in multi-level marketing companies and they don't realize what they're doing is manipulation. Mm -hmm. For example, when I got out last summer, I was, I, I was like, well, I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't participate in that. I didn't say that. And it wasn't until I started looking through my old content that I was like, oh my God, I did say that. Oh my wow. God, I did do that. Oh my God, I did hurt people. Even though that was never my intention, you know, I, I did all of those things. And I think when you're, when you're in it, I think the majority of people don't realize what they are doing and what they are saying is manipulation. I didn't. Right. I thought I was genuinely helping people. And I think that's where things get really confusing. There's people that know exactly what they're doing. They figured out the formula. They know what they need to say. They know what they're doing and they're okay with it. And then there's, you know, people that realize what they're doing and go, hold on a second. So I am staring and I remember this very distinctly. In January of 2020, February, January, February of 2020, I got really sick. I got COVID. It was before we knew it was COVID. I was sick for six weeks and I've told this story a wow. lot, but it's, it's very important to what we're talking about here. And that was, you know, I didn't have a lot of energy and I, that was where I started to question what I was doing because my energy was so limited. I didn't have a lot of time to do other things. I didn't have energy because I was constantly sleeping because I was so sick and I remember throughout those those following months, just questioning what I was doing, who I was spending time with, like, what are we doing here? You know, I came across what I call the crossroads and the crossroads are who I was in the MLM and my old self and seeing two very distinct paths and that path being okay, well, I can just walk away and remember who I, who I was, who, I, you know, the, the joys that I used to love and who I used to be, or I can move forward and say, well, I know the only way that I can move forward and to make even more money is to recruit more people and take advantage of more people, manipulate them and, and get them into this thing that I know that they're not making money because I was looking at my team. I was having conversations with my team. Uh, you know, they were like, I'm not making any money. These are the same people that were buying product every single month. These are the same people that were showing up on all the 
indoctrination type events that were virtual at, virtual at that time. So I was either okay with manipulating them and making money off of their backs, or I, I was going to get out. And mm -hmm. there are so many people that I can see, you know, these, some of these top leaders and you can go back and you can kind of see where they made that switch. And for me there, you can definitely see the change in their social media. You can definitely, this might sound kind of weird, but like I can see a shift in their eyes, their eyes get darker, their whole like energy. I don't know how to explain this gets darker, you know, their, their cadence when they're speaking changes. It's, it's really weird. And I got to that crossroads and I said, I am not going to take advantage of these people. I'm not okay with that. And that's not me saying, oh, well, you know, Aaron, you're such a great person. I just think that that crossroads is really important to talk about because when cognitive dissonance starts showing up and you start questioning what's going on around you, whether it's a religious cult or a commercial cult, it's really hard to deal with. You're going to experience all kinds of emotions. You know, I was so sad. I was so angry. I, 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 would experience all of these different emotions, you know, in the same day. And you have to allow yourself to sit in those emotions. You have to allow yourself to process. And the reason that I think people join from one MLM to the next is because they don't allow themselves that pause to experience the emotions, to ask the questions, and they jump right into the next thing because conveniently they got a message from somebody that they used to know from previous companies that's starting a new thing. And it's just, it's so much. One thing that I wanted to mention is in your videos, you talk about how they use almost religious manipulation because they're telling people, well, God wants you to be part of this MLM. And I think that's so interesting because, again, like if I were a waitress, I don't think ever my boss would come up to me and be like, I'm so glad you walked in. This is what God wanted for you. Can you imagine? <laughs> so I wanted to see if you had any thoughts on that. Yeah, a lot of these MLM leaders will say things exactly like that. You know, God really was calling me to be a part of this company. It was not something that I was planning, you know, and I just had to listen to my heart and I did a lot of praying and, you know, that's why I'm here and God has a purpose for you and, you know, um, you're in the right place. You were brought here for a reason and the whole, the whole spiritual manipulation is absolutely disgusting in my opinion. And there are many companies that are a lot more religious than others. For example, uh, a lot of the essential oil companies are extremely faith-based. They may not say that, but then you go to the event and they're, ha I can't wait to see your face when I tell you this. I don't know if you know this, but there are companies that have done baptisms at, no. their, at their company events. No. Yes. Yeah, on video. Where do they get the water? We've seen it. Yeah. They're at like the pool. No. We're doing baptisms on pool day? Yeah. Yeah. Just let me be on my cruise, right? <laughs> I just came here to be on a cruise. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I mean these are these are at hotels. Oh my They're doing gosh. stuff like this at hotels. Yeah. So there's there some companies are are more faith based than others, but you do see a lot of faith manipulation um, from a lot of the reps, you know, and and this plays right into the bite model as well, just like what we were talking about. Um, you know, they're using manipulation, they're using spiritual faith based manipulation uh, to keep people in, you know, and and to pre prevent them from questioning. And and you can't tell me, you cannot tell me. Now, I know everybody believes in different things, whether it's a higher power, God, whatever it is that people believe in. Okay. You cannot tell me that God would be okay with people being manipulated and taken advantage of in the way that we see in these commercial cults, in these religious cults. You cannot tell me that that type of a higher power would be okay with people experiencing this kind of pain and manipulation. There's absolutely no way. Amen. And also, like, let me point out, I think it's great. Like, if you want to believe in God, have a relationship with Jesus, whatever you want to do, like, that's you on your own time. Please do that. 
what we're speaking to and what we're trying to illustrate is the fact that maybe someone in your upline or someone who sees you sees that you have a relationship with God and uses that to manipulate you into doing their bidding. That's what we have the issue with. We don't have the issue with you praying and receiving answers and having, you know, direction in your life. We see the issue with people using that against you and and using that to extort you for your money and your time and your efforts. Exactly. And those those types of extortions, if you will, um, that person continues to get paid off, off of it. That person is saying, well, you know, maybe you should pray about it or maybe you should read this scripture or maybe you should spend some time in this or whatnot. And or or it's things like, you know, if you're watching this live, it's because God called you here. You're meant to be a part of this. I'm not a fan of that. And no. trust me, I believe in like maybe there are no coincidences and maybe we're like, maybe I found your page, Erin, because I was supposed to spread awareness. But I'm not I'm not going to use that to get people to buy something from me or to take someone's money. It's just like be on your own path, but allow that to be separate from this whole business model, because I think it, it should be separate. But that, again, that's just my opinion. People are more than welcome to believe differently. That's what my podcast is all about. Everyone has differences of opinions, different belief systems, whatever it is. We're just trying to bring awareness to the mind control that goes on using these manipulation strategies. So thank you for illustrating that, Erin. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. (laughs) And maybe that leads right into information control because when there's the lack of knowing what's going on, like you said, when you don't pause and look around and you don't look at the the actual information, that's when it's easy to just slip into the next one. So what are some ways that these MLM companies are limiting information to their people? Uh, well, one of one of the main ways when you're talking about a lot of these products and, and information control specifically is hiding behind proprietary blends. So they say it's safe. They say take it to your doctor, have your doctor look it over, but you're taking a list of ingredients. You don't know how much of each ingredient there is. You don't know if there's other things in it because they're able to hide behind a proprietary blend. And so how is your doctor supposed to sign off with that? So that's one part. Uh, the other way that these companies use uh, information control is by not having an income disclosure statement. And the companies that do have it, they don't tell their people that they have it. You know, I don't remember ever seeing an income disclosure statement, even though it's in the back office. If that company has one, they typically have it in the back office or on the website. It's not something that's talked about. It's there because they're like, listen, we're, we're different over here, but they don't tell that to their people. Uh, when it comes to the leaders and information control, it's like you were talking about earlier. You know, if your husband, if your wife, if your spouse, your family members, you know, they don't agree with what you're doing, find new family members. We're your family now. This is your family. This is your community. You know, so there's all different ways um, that information control happens. And typically when you have somebody that does not agree with the rep, what they're doing, how they're going about doing it, um, you will see some of the same patterns. I'm literally seeing it on my last video. It's, it's happening right now. So in the last video, um, there, I was covering a new company and in that new company, uh, I was talking about the, the the founder, and that founder has been a part of multiple companies. So she's recruited a lot of people. And this is a perfect example, example of information control. She is going through my comments on the video. She is screenshotting people that she has recruited that have commented on my video, giving information or whatever, and she's messaging them like, really? wow, and then blocking them because she doesn't like what they're saying. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's like also another behavioral control thing. Absolutely. She's trying to control their behavior. Yeah. And then it goes even deeper into thought control. So what are some ways that you think they're controlling thoughts? I think with thought control, it is 
knowing facts about that person. And you gave a perfect example of this, I feel like, when you were saying, well, you want to be successful for your kids, right? You want to bring your spouse home, right? You want to leave that full-time job, right? And they're they're reprogramming how you're thinking about this. And mm. that is where I, I have seen a lot of victim blaming and shaming is them trying to shame, blame, you know, that type of thing, th those people into working. And I think that there's a lot of a lot of crisscrossing in between all of the, you know, in the bite model. Um, I think that behavior information, there's, there's so many different areas that it crosses, but I think for sure the manipulation when somebody is questioning whether they want to be a part of it anymore, when somebody is questioning, am I really making money at this? Is this really worth my time? You know, I'm skipping out on dinner with my family to get on the zoom. Um, and, and those types of thoughts, I think is for sure uh, what happens in, in MLM companies. Yeah, I could see that, which also leads into the emotional control yes. when you don't do the things that they want you to do and they start blaming you, like you said, victim blaming, making you feel guilty for not jumping on the Zoom call when you're like, I just want to spend time with my family. But I think you've mentioned it in your videos. It's just slowly, a little at a time where initially it's no, these are business hours, these are family hours, and then it's well, it's just one dinner. Well, it's just one game I'm missing or whatever it is that you should be there with your family for. Yeah. And slowly you're baked into this company and you didn't even realize that you have no personal time anymore, no family time, no identity, no sovereignty as an individual. They're claiming to you that you have your own business, yet, like you said, you have no control over the products, you have no control over the way that you market it, and you're just a cog in this machine. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. All of it really just kind of works together, if you will, <laughs> um, yeah. in an MLM company. And I, I just think it's really, really sad. It's really manipulative. So many people get hurt. And that's why I have um, done what I've done. It's me trying to right my wrongs. It's me trying to prevent people from joining. It's me trying to prevent people from you know, just experiencing the hurt and or hurting other people at the same time. And it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Well, it's really amazing that you're taking the time to do that. I know personally how long it takes to make YouTube videos, to do the podcast thing. It's not easy. And it's also not easy admitting that you were wrong about something. It takes a really big person to be like, hey, guys, I messed up. And now let me help you not mess up. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, I really appreciate what you're doing, and I would love it if you could give our listeners any sort of advice if they're involved in something like this and they're ready to leave, but they just don't know how to do it. Where do they begin? Yeah, um, I would like to speak to two different groups of people. So the first group is for those of you that are participating in a multi-level marketing company. The first thing that I suggest that you do is to see if your company has an income disclosure statement. If they do, look at your rank. And look at what the company says that the average or the median, the median is the most effective, um, accurate number from the company. Look at what you are, what you're making, and I'll get to that in a second, but, but look at that income disclosure statement. Look at your rank. If you're somebody that has team members, look at your, your team members' ranks and what the company says that on average they're going to be making and just kind of go through it and don't go through it with that MLM filter, that toxic positivity filter where you're like, no, this is great. I'm, you know, I'm going to make this happen in six years from now or whatever, a year from now, three years from now, uh, I'm, I'm going to be successful. I'm just, I've got to put my time in. Stop. Remove the filters look at the income disclosure statement, and then do an, an accurate profit and loss statement. Take your taxes from the previous year, take all of all of that, do an, a, a profit and loss statement for your business. You may have been making X number, but what were your expenses? And the reason that I'm saying that is because in my last year in MLM, I sold over $77,000 worth of product and I net $10,000 for the year. 10,000 look at the numbers, not the numbers that your leader tells you, not the numbers necessarily that your company says, but take the income disclosure statement and match it up 
with your profit and loss statement. Because a lot of these companies, they're like, oh my gosh, you're selling, you're a six figure earner, but they don't account for the hidden expenses, whether it's company events, front loading product, buying the new stuff, uh, you know, pay to play stuff, all of that, that money comes from somewhere. And any business is, it's gonna be money in versus money out. What is your profit? So look at those numbers. If you're in a second group of people where you have somebody that is pitching you a multi-level marketing company, ask that person for those two things. Can I see your company's income disclosure statement? Can I see your profit and loss statement? Because if they really want you in the business, they're gonna show you this stuff. And what's cool about that is if they are somebody in an MLM that has never heard of those things, you're going to be in a place where you get to educate them. Doesn't mean they're going to receive it well. Doesn't mean that they're going to be happy that you're asking. They're probably going to go to their leader and say, this person's asking for my profit and loss statement. This person is asking for our income disclosure statement. I don't even know what that is. Their leader's going to go, they're watching anti-MLM content and you're probably going to get blocked. But those are two things that you absolutely need to have in hand before you make a decision. If you're fine with making something like $45 in a month for working every single day and you know going live all the time and all of that, if you think that that is worth your time, so be it. But if you, if you look at this and you're like, these numbers don't even make any sense. This is not a business. I'm paying to say I'm a business owner with this company. Get those two documents. If they don't want to share it, then then consider that a red flag and run the other way. You can block them too if you want to, but those are red flags for them. You know, when somebody says, because I, I, I have to think about when I was in an MLM, if somebody said, can I see your profit and loss statement? You know, can I see your income disclosure statement? That's how I would have reacted. What are you talking about? Income disclosure statement? Huh? I'm making six figures. What are you talking about? Get them to think. And if they if they block you, so be it. But you're not joining a commercial cult and, and consider that an incredible thing for you. Yeah, it's just about planting the seeds. Yes. I think with anyone who's involved in a cult, it's not about tearing them down or, or educating them on the spot because as we know, it's incredibly difficult to receive any type of criticism that challenges your identity as we yeah. have cleared up. That it is part of who you are once you are so deep into these organizations that you just need to plant a seed for yeah. these people to start thinking for themselves and finding their critical thinking again. So this has been an awesome conversation. Before we close, I need to get a Linda Listen statement <laughs> from you. So anything that you want to say, it could be to any of the organizations. It could be like, this is what I've been meaning to say to you. Or it could be to someone who's involved in an MLM's like a statement of hope, whichever you choose is up to you. Hmm. I kind of incorporated that into that last little bit about the two different groups, but um, I guess the best thing that I can say is, listen, Linda, if you're getting upset that I'm asking for a, a, your profit and loss statement and the income disclosure statement, it sounds like you might be the problem. Or you might be in a cult. Or you might be in a cult <laughs> and you should probably call your dad. <laughs> <laughs> or go listen to my book, my podcast, yeah. your podcast. So speaking of, where can people find all of your content if they do want to do some deep dives into MLMs? Yeah, um, I am on Instagram. So the real beast mode and it's spelled just by, like my last name. So B I E S. T-M-O-D-E. <laughs> you can find me there. You can find me on TikTok. I do a lot of like short um, form videos on there. Uh, and you can find, and my handle there is Beast Mode LV, like Las Vegas. Um, and then I'm on YouTube under Aaron Bees. So if you would like a longer format, if you would like uh, deep dives in the company, I love going over comp plans. I love going over income disclosure statements because it's coming directly from the company and there's no denying the numbers. So you can find me on YouTube under Aaron Bees. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for spending your time with me today and sharing all of your wisdom and your advice. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was an awesome conversation and I just hope that it prevents people from joining an MLM or helps them get out.
for everyone else, thank you for watching. Until next time, follow your highest excitement, be conscious, and be well. Thanks for listening. If you like what you hear, it would mean a lot if you could like and subscribe on YouTube and leave a review or a comment to help with our visibility. You can also find me on social media at Colts to Consciousness or reach out by email at Colts to Consciousness at gmail.com.